systematic and expository study of the Bible at the Deeper Life Bible Church offers you an enriching steady spiritual growth, thus opening your eyes to God's own way of righteousness. In this case, you will have the opportunity to listen to one such enriching Bible study. So prepare your heart to be blessed. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. We thank you because you've called us together so you can speak your mind and your word unto us. We praise your name because we have committed ourselves that we'll obey you whatever you are telling us to do. And we pray that today you'll grant us the grace, the strength, the enablement so that we'll be obedient unto you in Jesus' name. We have heard your voice. We have heard your calling. You are telling us that you have sent us even as the Father has sent you. And Lord, we are praying that every one of us will hear the voice of the Master and will obey and will run errands for you in Jesus' name. We pray that you open our eyes on understanding this evening so that the word you are telling us today will be able to carry out by your power, by your grace, by your unction, by your anointing. And the places we go, we will do your will and we'll do what you want us to do and people will come to the Lord in their large numbers in Jesus' name. Let your mind be upon us. Let your hand be mighty upon us. Let your spirit be upon us. And Lord, as we go, may we have the eye, the desire to want to please you and you alone and not to look for commendation from anybody, but to stand for your word uncompromisingly. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Today's study is on the need for personal evangelism. One of the greatest needs today in the church is for the church of converted consecrated disciples of all ages to give themselves to the task of personal evangelism. No doubt you might have heard before that the church has talked about personal evangelism. The word evangelism actually is derived from the word evangel or the gospel. And when we talk of evangelism, we're talking about People of God, children of God, taking the evangel, taking the gospel, and spreading that, and preaching that. And I want you to see that in evangelism, right in the middle of that word evangelism, you have an angel. That means the evangel, the evangelist, or the evangelism we're talking about, has behind it. A person with the love, the mind, the commitment of an angel to bear up the evangel or the gospel or the message to the people that are perishing. The word personal behind it means that there is an individual that has a personal commitment, a personal consecration, a personal devotion, and he takes it as his life's duty that is personally, individually committed to, that he will take that gospel with the willingness of an angel, with the addiction of an angel, with the obedience of an angel, with the perfect commitment of an angel, and take that evangel, that gospel, that message, onto the world beyond, personal and individual, having that commitment, having that consecration and taking that evangel or taking that gospel and reaching out to another person on a one-to-one -one basis. Put it this way, personal evangelism then is the attempt on the part of a Christian, a believer, a person who has known the Lord, to show another person from the word of God four basic things. Number one, 
to show that man or that woman or that child is need as a lost and guilty sinner, is need of a savior, and is need of God's salvation too, that he will show that individual that Christ, the Son of God, is the savior that that individual needs. Three, he will show how that person will make Christ his own personal Lord and Savior. And four, he will show that individual what it involves to acknowledge Christ henceforth as the Lord of his life. When you catch that vision, when you see that sight, when you taste of that love of Christ that will reach out and go out to seek and to save the lost, every day of your life, you'll be praying to the Lord. The beginning of every week, you'll be earnestly calling upon the name of the Lord. And this will be your prayer. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart today. As I reach out in the office, as I go out in the market, help me to see with the eyes of Christ. Help me to feel with the mind of Christ. Help me to speak with the lips of Christ. Help me to stretch out a hand of mercy, a hand of love, a hand of compassion, and lay that soul upon my heart, that I may love that soul, and you may love that soul through me, that I truly may do my part to bring that soul to thee. That will be your concern. That will be the passion of your soul. That will be the eagerness, the earnestness with which you go out. And you'll want to reach to the lost, bringing them to the feet of the cross, so that they'll come to know the Lord. And as I said, look at this need of personal evangelism, you as a Christian, as an individual, taking this in hand, and taking the gospel out to reach out to other people. I'll talk to you one on God's will. Two, God's work. Three, God's word. One, God's will. The will of God. When we say the will of God, we mean the thing that is uppermost in the heart of God. The thing that is very close and near and so dear to the heart of God. We're talking about the thing that God cannot do without. We're talking about the priority of God's program. We're talking about the thing that concerns God and the Son and the Holy Ghost and the angels and heaven. We're talking of what concerns the absolute, the perfect, the universal will of God. One, for Christ, His only begotten Son. Two, for the church, the body of Christ. Three, for the local church, everybody in the local church. And four, for the individual believer. And five, for the person out there that is still wallowing in sin, who does not know the way back home, God's will. Number two, God's work. We're talking about the work that endures unto eternity. We're talking about a work that has eternal consequence. We're talking about a work that God will give all the resources, all the power. We're talking about a work that whatever work you are doing in the world, whatever work you are doing for the government, whatever your work you are doing anywhere, there is no work that compares with this. The work that God does through you for the sake of other people and the word of God. God's will, God's work, God's word. Look at the first one. The will of God. Ezekiel chapter 33. Verse 11. Say unto them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. The Lord called the prophet. And he told the prophet to tell the people of Israel, Say unto them, I live. The idols are dead. All those idols are dumb and dead and lifeless. You tell the children of Israel that have gone away following idols and they are backsliding and they have lost the consciousness of the living God. Tell them, I am still alive. Not only that, as long as I live, and since I have been living, you tell them that I have no pleasure, I have no joy in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked will turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye thou house of Israel? 
And that is the same passion that God has ever put in the heart of anyone that knows God. Listen to me. That is the desire, the message, the statement that God has written in the heart, burnt in the heart of anyone that ever knew the heart of God. Abraham came before God and said, God, will you destroy the righteous or the wicked? Will you not allow the wicked to live? Abraham knew in his heart, it is not the will of God that those people will perish. Moses came before the Lord and said, Lord, I know these people have seen a great sin before you. Won't you pardon them? Won't you blot out their iniquity? You are a merciful God. It is not your nature to blot out and destroy all these wicked people they knew. And in the New Testament, Jesus Christ looked at Jerusalem. And he went over Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would have gathered you like the hens will gather the, cheek, the cheeks under their wings, but ye would not. And he wept over that city and said, if somebody could have told you the coming hour of trouble, the coming hour of damnation, the coming hour of doom upon you. But then he said he had no choice. He had to leave their house for them desolate. And yet when he got to the cross, that thing will not leave his mind. While dying on the cross, they said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And so in the heart of anyone that ever knows God, Ezekiel or Abraham or Moses or Christ or the disciples of Christ or you, if you know God, if you love God, if God has ever touched you, if you have ever come near the Lord to speak into your ears, he'll be telling you this, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked will turn from his way and live. And that assignment was given to Ezekiel, go and tell the house of Israel, when, if you know God, God will always be calling you to give you that assignment to go and tell all those people that it is not the will of God, the mind of God, the pleasure of God, that those people will die and perish and go to eternal lake of fire. But the message will be in your heart. The message will be in your mind. You'll wake up and you'll be thinking of, who will I tell today, Lord, lay his soul on my heart. Lord, that soul through me. That this day as I go out, by your grace and enablement, I'll be able to bring that soul unto thee. And I'll be able to tell that individual, as the Lord lives. It is not his will, his pleasure, his desire, his joy, that any of you will perish. But that you will turn and repent and believe and be saved. In First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved. To come and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Paul the Apostle, he told Timothy, and he said, Timothy, young Timothy, make use of your life aright. Cut off all those things from your life that do not have eternal consequence. Anything you are doing today, anything you are saying today, any action you have today, any habit you have today, look at it in the light of eternity. Will this habit, this action, this event, this word, this thing I'm doing, what will it matter a hundred years to this time? After I've left this place, after I've grown beyond my level now, when I've gone into the very streets of heaven, will all the activities I'm doing right now, will they matter in the light of eternity a hundred years to this time? Will I rejoice that I did what I did? I said what I said. I acted the way I acted. Timothy, you are young. Many years are before you. When you go out, go out with a mind of understanding that everyone that you see, it is not the will of God that any of them will be lost. But it is the will of God that they will be saved. And they will come to the knowledge of the truth. When you go to the office, how do you behave? What do you see? The people that you see, do you understand? It is not the will of God that they perish. Do you understand it is the will of God they will be saved? Look at Second Peter. And in 
chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Every time you go out, if you are a child of God, and you see all those people that have never known the Lord, never been saved, never born again, you ought to think and understand, why didn't Jesus come yesterday, last week, last month, last year, ten years ago? Why has he delayed his coming? That that manager you're working with, that director you're working under, that co-worker you're mixing with, that co-tenant you're living with, that husband you're sharing the bed with, that wife you have children with, those children that you are brought into the world, those people that you know and your hands are touching them, you have relationship with them, that they may not perish. And they will perish if somebody doesn't tell them about Christ, about the blood of Jesus, about the salvation that's available. They will perish if somebody doesn't preach unto them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see what it says here? That God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And he wants to use you to do that will. Animals will not do the will of God. That is the express will of God that will reach out to the world and get people saved. Trees, inanimate objects, are not going to rise up and do the will of God. But you, children of God, the people that rise up and pray every day, every time, that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And this is the will of God, that souls will not perish, that sinners will be saved, that the unrighteous will come to the Lord and be washed in the blood of the Lamb and they will repent and turn and embrace the gospel and embrace the Lord. If that is the will of the Lord, how are you doing that will? Let me show you our Master, our Lord, our Redeemer, the one that has gone before us, the one that has bought and purchased us and the one that is preparing a place for us now. Let me show you the central thing in his own life. When he was at the age of 12, his mother and Joseph went to Jerusalem. And they thought everything had been done. But Jesus knew at the age of 12, everything had not been accomplished. The business of the father had not been done. The will of the father had not been made plain. He stayed behind. No assurance of accommodation there because Mary and Joseph had left. No assurance of what to spend there because Mary and Joseph had left. No accommodation preserved. Mary and Joseph had left. No, not even a place where he might go and take his bath. Mary and Joseph had left. Three days he was there. Mary came back with Joseph and said, Why? We have been troubled because of you. He said, Why are you troubled? I came here to this world to do one thing, and only one thing, the business of my father. Wished you not, knew you not, did you not know, I will be about my father's business. In whose business are you? You are beyond the age of 12, age of 20, age of 30, age of 40, age of 50. You have known the Lord now for how many years, for how many months? In whose business are you? The business of the Father. Do your people know? Do your friends know? Do people around you know that the sin that is uppermost in your heart is the will of God? Wished you not, knew you not, I must be about my Father's business. Let me show you two verses of Scripture. One, that shows that He came to do the will of God. And two, the verse that shows what that will of God was. To show you an example. In John chapter 5. Verse 30, I can of my own self do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. I seek not mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. What then did he do? 
in doing the will of him that sent him, Christ, what did he do? Look at Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost, and is a perfect example. He did all he did so that you'll be able to follow after him. He did all he did so that you'll be able to walk in his footsteps. So that you'll be able to seek the lost. So that they will be saved. And before he left, he gave you and I this commandment, this commission. And if we obey it, we'll be like him. If we don't, we'll be different from him and we'll suffer this consequence. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What did he mean? Did he mean that while you are here, you close your eyes, no creatures around. Then you keep on walking with your eyes closed. You do not see the prostitutes by the wayside while you are going. You want to go to the uttermost end of the earth. And all the sinners, all the creatures in Jerusalem, you close your eyes. All the sinners in Judea, you close your eyes. All the sinners in Samaria, you close your eyes until you take the plane and you go far away. That what he meant? No. You keep your eyes open. Right where you are, while you are going, preach the gospel to every creature. And you'll find them in your home. You'll find them in your office. If you keep your eyes open, you'll find them in the market. If you keep your eyes open, you'll find them at school. If you keep your eyes open, you'll find them on the bus. If you keep your eyes open, you'll find them everywhere you go. Preach the gospel, therefore, to every creature. That's the will of God. Suppose you know it and you don't do it. Suppose you know it and you neglect it. Suppose you know it and you don't care. Suppose you never reach out. You never preach it. You never proclaim the message. You never tell the lost there is a savior. Suppose you close your mouth without speaking the gospel. You close your ears to the cries and the supplication of the people. And you fold your hand and you never give out the gospel message. What will happen to you? In Luke chapter 12, verse 47. And that servant, and that servant, maybe you, which knew is Lord's will. And prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. The important thing for you is to do the will of God. The Lord said, it's not all that say, Lord, Lord, that shall enter into the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now God's work. What we're here to do. Do you know you are not here by chance? Do you know God had, had an eternal purpose for creating you? Do you know that when you were being saved, Christ looked at you and he gave you an assignment? Do you know that when the Holy Spirit came into your life and was bearing witness with your heart, you became a child of God? Do you know that the Holy Spirit was looking ahead? She is the one that will do this. He is the one that will do that. And now since you've been saved, the work that the Father reserved for you, I can do it for you. All I can do is the work the Lord has given me to do. The work that the Lord has given me to do, you can do it for me. Because the Lord has apportioned everything, has divided everything. And if you do yours, I do mine. She does her own. He does his own. Everybody does his own. The work will be finished on time. If you don't, no other person will do the work for you. The people that God has sent you to, son of man, have made you a watchman over him. Over him. Over her. 
over her. And you don't me. I cannot watch over the people you are to watch over. He has given me a commission. He's given me over him. Over him. Over that place. But for you, he has given you that commission. Hear the word at my mouth. And bring the word unto them. When I tell the wicked man, that's the wicked man that has been assigned unto you. When I tell that wicked woman, the one that has been assigned unto you, for you to preach the gospel to that individual, if you don't, if you don't, I'll do mine. I'll do mine. I'll do the will of God from morning till evening, from week to week, all the days of my life. If you don't do yours, on the last day, it says they will die, they will perish in their sin, but their blood will I require at your hand. He that knows the master's will, the Lord's will, and he does not do it, he will be beaten with many stripes. And to him that knows to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin, the work of the Lord. In Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, verse 20, And they went forth and preached everywhere, and they went forth and preached everywhere. They had one Lord. They obeyed his commandment. They had one master. They obeyed his commandment. They had a single lawgiver, a single governor. They obeyed his commandment. They went forth and they preached everywhere. Some don't talk about Christ in their homes. They did it everywhere. Some will not talk to somebody they are sitting with. On the, in the taxi, in the bus, on the train. They went everywhere, preaching everywhere. Some will never tell a co-worker, a co-tenant, about the love of God, about the sacrifice of Christ, about the possibility of redemption and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, about how to prepare to meet the Lord in eternity, and about the necessity of being born again and being saved. But the early church, they went everywhere. Not only the apostles, not only the ordained ministers, but all the people in the church. They went everywhere. The Lord walking with them. Confirming the word with signs following. Let me show you. That that refers to the whole church. The men, the women, the young people. All that were born again. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. From verse 1, and Saul was consenting unto his death, referring to Stephen. Stephen died. He had finished his work. And he didn't leave anything undone. He had served in every way that God wanted him to serve. And he died. And I'm asking you, Suppose we should leave this world now. Are you finished? All those people that were assigned to you, have you finished your job? The people you should proclaim and preach the gospel to, have you done it? The lost you should seek and find and bring to the fold, have you done it? The backsliders that are living very close to you and God has committed you to reach out to that individual every time you are praying, every time you are kneeling down, is impressing that name on your heart, impressing that name on your heart. While you are walking on the road, it's impressing that person on your heart. While you are eating, it's impressing that person on your heart. Have you done it? Acts chapter 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Which shall fulfill all my my will. Can you say that? That you have fulfilled all the will of the Lord for your own life. And see that David, he did what the Lord wanted him to do. And God said, that is a man 
utter my own heart. Can the Lord bear testimony for you like that, concerning you like that, that you too, you have done the will of the Lord, I pray. May the Lord be able to testify like that for you in Jesus' name. But look at Acts chapter 8 verse 1 again. And Saul was consenting unto his death. That man died, he had served, he had done what the Lord wanted him to do. At that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Is the church, the members, the people that were scattered. And in verse 4, therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere, preaching the word. That is still the will of the Lord today. Today we gather to study. We gather to fellowship. We gather to worship. And then after the fellowship, after the worship, after the study, we scatter to all the places we have come from so that we can evangelize, preach the gospel. The church of that time practiced personal evangelism. And God blessed this effective method of preaching every creature with the saving gospel of Christ. The church today cannot continue to exist without personal evangelism. Each believer reaching out, scattering to all the places we have come from to preach the gospel and tell the lost that God saves today through Christ. The church that loses its evangelistic fervor and zeal will soon cease to exist. The Christian who gives nothing to the Lord and does nothing for the Lord is a good for nothing Christian. Maybe there are many people there. Good for nothing Christians. They won't give their time to serve the Lord. They won't give their energy to serve the Lord. They won't speak out a word of encouragement, a word of exhortation, a word of the gospel to the lost or to the backslider. Good for nothing Christians. Every believer is commanded to do personal evangelism. One, you have to reach out to the people that are lost. They have never tasted of the goodness of the Lord. Look at Proverbs chapter 24, verse 11. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. If you act as though you don't know your wife is not born again, and you never talk to her, if you act as though you didn't know your, your husband is not born again, and you refuse to preach the gospel to him, if you act as though you didn't know that those neighbors and those people that move along with you, that rub shoulders with you, you act as though you didn't know they are not born again, the Lord is looking at you. Those people are ready to perish, ready to be slain, ready to be lost, ready to fall into the brink of eternal perdition. And yet you are folding your hand. You are standing on the plank. You are going on the road that leads unto life eternal. Somebody else told you and plugged you out of that bottomless pit. Plugged you out of that terrible condition. And you are seeing all the others rushing in a mad rush. All the heads of humanity rushing into destruction, dying every day in their sins. And it never, never bothers you. It says in verse 12, If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. Does not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, does he not know it? Shall not he render to every man according to his works? Don't wait for the judgment of God. Don't wait until God will come, Christ will come, and he will say, Thou slothful and wicked servant, you saw them then, you folded your hand. You saw them crying, you closed your eyes. You saw them perishing, you blocked your ears, and you will not hear their cry, their cry for help. 
You saw them running to idols and rushing to places where there is no redemption. And yet, you did not speak a word for Christ. That wicked, stubborn, rebellious servant. I'll, I'll give you your portion among the wicked. How I pray for you that you will wake up today. And that you will arise. And you will do the work that God has given you to do. Paul the Apostle said, I finished the race. I run the course. I finished the ministry. I preached the gospel. Right now, a crown of righteousness is awaiting me. I know you quote that sometimes. But as you quote that, remember, the Paul we're talking about, he was on the sea preaching the gospel. On the road, preaching the gospel. In peril of robbers, preaching the gospel. In peril, in dangers, in the wilderness, preaching the gospel. A night in the deep, preaching the gospel. In the prison, preaching the gospel. With the captain of the ship, preaching the gospel. Tied to the soldier, preaching the gospel. Everywhere, every time, preaching the gospel. And he said, what mean ye? To weep and to break mine heart. I've already committed myself to the preaching of the gospel. And that's what I'm going to do. I care not what will happen to me in Jerusalem. I am going to finish and fulfill my ministry. That's the person that said, a crown of righteousness is laid up for me. But look at that man. Has never won any soul. Look at that man. Has never witnessed to anybody. Look at that man. There is no name in the book of life that gets into his record. That that's the person he wants to the Lord. And he's always quoting, I know that a crown of righteousness is kept for me. For you. But it's for the people that are serving the Lord. The people that there is something going on in their record. They have gone out. They have reached out. They have stretched out and hand of mercy. They have preached the gospel to the Lord to reclaim them to the kingdom of God. Then they have seen backsliders. And they have also preached the word unto them with conviction, with earnestness. In James chapter 5, verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one converts him. That means if somebody living close to you as backsliding. If somebody, a friend to you before, has gone away from the Lord. And is not living a life of sin. A life of carelessness. He may be hiding it, but you know it. He may be pretending, but you know it. He may look as if he's still in the fold because he's still carrying Bible and he's still talking in the language of Canaan and he's still talking in the language of the church. He's still talking about salvation. He's still talking about the gospel message. But you know he has backsliding. If any of you, among you, err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner, that's a backslider, the person who was in the kingdom before, but now is in a faraway country. The one that was washed and cleansed before, but now is in adultery, is in fornication, is in immorality, and is not living a righteous life. He may be covering up, she may be covering up, but you know it. And you become concerned. And you weep and you pray on your knees. And you reach out to that man and he wants to talk about money. He says, no, I'm sorry. I've come to talk about your eternal soul. I'm not talking about money. He may want to talk about business. I say, no, I'm sorry. This is not, I have a business greater than the business you are talking about. I'm talking about your doomed eternal soul. Already you are getting lost. Already you are going away from the fold. Already you are going away from the place and the platform of righteousness. And I know it. Come to the Lord. And if you will reach out and grab that man and hold that man and pull him and draw him into the kingdom of God, let him know that he that converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Well, that's the work God has given you to do. Which work are you doing? Now, the work in you. We're told in Romans chapter 1, Verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. How many people who are ashamed? They can talk about Christ publicly when Muslims are around, when their co-workers are around, when their lecturers or principals are around, when the people of the world, when they are out, they'll be hiding the gospel. Pretending as if they do not know that those people are going to perish. 
they'll be laughing with the people who are dying. They'll be laughing with the people who may the very next minute go into hell fire. But there are people who are not ashamed of the gospel. People like Paul the Apostle. People like John the Beloved. People like Peter. People like John the Baptist. And there are people still today that anywhere that you cannot be allowed to preach the gospel, they're not interested in being there. Anyone that will say, I'm your friend, and as long as I'm with you here, don't talk about that Bible, it makes me ashamed. They don't want to have a person like that as their friend. If you're ashamed of the gospel, I do not want to be walking with you because I like to preach that gospel every time. I like to proclaim that gospel every time. And if there's anybody around who says, well, I don't like you to do it. Every time you do it, I don't like staying with you. Let him then go away. But Paul the Apostle said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. And that word, the gospel, must be in you. And if that gospel is in you, you'll preach it. You'll publish it. You'll proclaim it. Let me refer you to Psalm 68 verse 11 Psalm 68 verse 11 the Lord gave the word great was the company of those that published it the Lord has given you the word it's in your heart it's in your mind it's in your spirit you know it, you have it, you have tasted it, you have experienced it, you are born again yourself. The Lord has given the word. Great was the company of those that published it, those that proclaimed it, those that preached it. Are you going to be of that company? Are you going to join that team? Are you going to proclaim the word of the Lord? The Lord gave the word. And the Lord has given the word. Great was the company of those that published, proclaimed, and preached it. Are you there? If you are going to join that company, can you raise up your hand and let me see you? Can you stand up and tell the Lord, I will. I will. I will. And anything that will contradict and anything that will not allow me, anything that will hinder me from preaching this gospel, proclaiming this gospel, spreading this gospel, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, I'll cut it off. I commit my life, I give myself to the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are there, arise on your feet and talk to the Lord. Oh Lord, I will. Oh Lord, I will. Oh Lord, I will. Oh Lord, I will. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. You did it before, why not again? A Satan close your mouth. As the world of business blindfolded you, have the worldly friends tied you up? Or have you backslidden to the point that you are not interested in preaching the gospel, proclaiming the good news of the Lord? Have you been deceived by the riches of this world? And you don't know that this life will end one day. And at that time, the only thing that will matter is what you have done for the glory of God. What you have done towards His holy name. Don't you care? that people are perishing around you? Don't you care they do not know the way of salvation? 
Don't you care because of those who are backsliding? Have you been about your father's business? Are you folding your hand, closing your mouth, closing your eyes, blocking your ears to the needs of those who are perishing? I believe you have been blessed. Don't let this message die. Listen to it again and pass it to others. You can get more from God at the Deeper Life Bible Church. Our headquarters is Deeper Life Bible Church, Bagada, Lagos, Nigeria. Blessed are your ears for hearing these things. We'll meet in heaven if you do them. <laughs>